All right, I did not realize that solving for final temperature would be so popular, so I wanted to create a new video that's a little cleaner on the text. I was using my finger on the old one, so this one's going to be a lot cleaner since I'm using an Apple Pencil now. So if we're going to solve for the final temperature of any substance, we're going to follow um, this the usual formula of Q equals MC delta T. Remember, our unit for Q is in joules, our unit for mass is in grams, our unit for specific heat capacity is in joules per gram degrees Celsius, and also remember that C is usually given unless it's something you're solving for in the question. Final temperature is measured in degrees Celsius, um, and specifically, if we want to solve for a change in temperature, it would be the final minus the initial temperature. So, let's go ahead and get into this. So we're going to use our equation, we're going to plug in the values. So our quantity of heat is 135.7 joules, and that's equal to the mass. It says that we had 54.0 grams of water, and we're going to multiply that by our specific heat capacity of water, which if you don't know, it's 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Like I said, it'll usually be given to you, but um, this is probably one that you might want to remember. Um, that's true for liquid water, I should clarify. If it was solid or if it was a vapor, it would be in the lower twos. And we're going to multiply this by the final temperature. That's what we're solving for, so we're going to leave that as the variable, minus the initial temperature, 25.0 degrees Celsius. All right, so I'm going to work this problem in two ways. Um, I'm going to do the easier way first, and then I'll show you guys if you want a little bit more of a different approach, if you're a little bit more uh, warm to math, perhaps, you'll like the second approach better. So let's go ahead and get in. No matter which approach we take, we're going to combine our like terms. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 54 times 4.184. So we have 135.7 joules is equal to 54 times 4.184. I get 225.936. And when we multiply those, we can cancel out the unit gram. So it's joules over degrees Celsius. And then times the final temperature minus 25.0 degrees Celsius. So this is where I'm going to split my screen here. So we're going to say this way is going to be the easy route to take, easy. Um, and then this way, if you're interested, might be a bit, uh, a bit more difficult. Um, it's nothing too crazy, but it's not going to get you to the final answer as cleanly. So um, I'm going to show you the easy route first because I think that's what most of you care about and you just want to get to the final answer and be done. So I'm going to rewrite this expression. 135.7 joules is equal to 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius times the final temperature Tf minus 25 degrees Celsius. So the easy route is we're going to go ahead and divide out 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius. Divide this also by 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius. You can cancel out the joules unit since you have one in the numerator, one in the denominator. And 135.7 divided by 225.936 gets us 0 0.601 degrees Celsius. And that's equal to the final temperature minus 25 degrees Celsius. So now all you have to do is just do the inverse. We're going to add 25 degrees Celsius to both sides. Once you do that, you're going to get a final temperature of 25.601 degrees Celsius equals Tf. That's the easy route. So if that made sense to you, you may not want to finish the video and you may want to watch um, or just stop watching right there. Um, if you want to see a different route, perhaps that one didn't make as much sense to you for some reason, then that's fine. We're here to show you guys another way that you can solve this question too. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the equation one more time. So it's 135.7 joules is equal to 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius times the final temperature minus 25 degrees Celsius. So in this one, um, we're going to distribute the 225 to both variables inside of this parentheses. 
So we're going to rewrite our expression and say that 135.7 joules is equal to 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius Tf. And then you're going to do 225.936 times negative 25. So you're going to get minus 5,648.4, and we can cancel out the degrees Celsius because you multiplied. One was in the numerator, one was in the denominator, so you have a unit of joules attached to that value. So now we're going to go ahead and add 5,648.4 joules because these are like terms with our product over here. 5,648.4 joules. So when you do that, when we add 5648.4 plus 135.7, we get an answer of 5,784.1 joules is equal to 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius Tf. Um, that looks a little confusing down here. I'm going to clear that. It looks like an 8. So this is joules over degrees Celsius times Tf. So we do the inverse. We're multiplying over here, so that tells us that we have to do the inverse, which is to divide. 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius. Divide this side by 225.936 joules over degrees Celsius. You can cancel out the units of joules, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. And you're left with a unit of degrees Celsius, which is exactly what we wanted. Let's go ahead and divide these two numbers, 5784.1 divided by 225.936. And you guys will get the exact same answer. 25.601 degrees Celsius equals the final temperature, TF. There you go. I hope that this video helps make sense of something that could be potentially confusing. Um, if it does, please consider giving me a likes up on the or a thumbs up on the video and uh, smash the subscribe button so that you can see some future content if you ever get stuck around some topic of chemistry. Thanks for checking out the video.